Good everyone, it's Renew. Today we have an updated premium review on the Hudson Mark V. The review for this is almost, well, it's over four years old, so yeah, it needed an update. So whilst I'm working on other projects, I thought, well, might as well update this whilst I'm at it. The Hudson Mark V comes in at rank 2, battle rating 2.0, and costs 700 Golden Eagles. And let's just put it this way, this thing is going to surprise you how good it is. Before I get into detail, however, if you wish to jump ahead to a... Well, well, if you wish to cut up ahead to the overview of the vehicle in the hangar with the weaponry, armor, and things like that, please do feel free to do so. And also feel free to skip ahead to the gameplay if that's all you're here for. Without further ado, let's get in and let's take a look at this aircraft in a bit more detail. So we'll start out by just looking at it, to be honest, because this is a bit different to the B-34 in the US tech tree. It's obviously got quite a few changes. The Hudson was intended to be a coastal patrol aircraft, and that's why it's got some of the more unusual weaponry loadout that you might not expect on something like this. These rails aren't just for show, but we'll, we'll get into those very shortly. Comparing it to a B-34, obviously we have lower BR, but we also have lower firepower in terms of respective BR, but BR for BR, this thing's still pretty strong. So let's get into the weaponry armor and engines, of course, and we're going to start off with the good old engines. These are different to the B-34, and uh, yeah, they still have EFS, but these are just a little bit different, and they aren't too bad, like 1200 horsepower is more than enough. You can get back to base on one engine, but the engines are quite fragile in my experience. So bear that in mind and just be a bit more mindful than what you would be in a B-34. But you still do have EFS, as I said, so it's not too bad and you should be fine. Coming up to the main armament, we do have two forward fire and 7.7 .7 brandings. These are well, they're firing British rounds, so automatically they're better. So they're firing mostly API rounds, which is really nice. You can set quite a few fires with these bad boys, and they will definitely help you out. And let's just say it's useful to have front alarmant or armament on a bomber like this, because trust me, you're going to need these bad boys. Coming over to the rear, we have Nigel in a ball turret with 2,000 rounds between the two guns. And you have excellent coverage. This is one of the best ball turrets for the BR. And most importantly, you can pretty much stick it up at most angles that you're going to need. And you can shoot at planes. One of my favorite things to do is fly underneath a Condor and set all four of its engines on fire. And watch the poor sod burn. And trust me, it's quite satisfying. But yeah, this, this is definitely going to be the turret that does most of the work. Against ground targets, however, you do also have access to a Vickers K machine gun. The ball turret can also shoot down at it due to the 10 degrees of gun depression, so do take that into consideration as well. But for the most part, in your first initial pass with your turrets, if you're using them against ground targets, it will be the Vickers K. This, is, this isn't as good as the Browning, but it definitely seems to set more fires than the Browning, and this little fellow can come in handy. And trust me, this, this plane's coverage is more than enough, the ball turret will do most of the work, and the guns in the front will definitely help you out. Coming over to modifications, obviously it's a premium, so it does come all with everything. But then we come to, of course, bomb loads. This plane only has access to a singular bomb load, which is four 250-pound bombs and six 100-pound bombs. This is more than enough to do basic bombing, so you can take out a base with this, you can take out a good number of ground targets with this thing, and yeah, it's it's pretty solid and can definitely do a lot of work. Throw in the machine guns as well, and you can pretty much take out loads of targets before running out of ammunition or needing to reload your turrets. The one downside of the Hudson is the rockets. These are something it can carry, but these are solid AP rockets. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I did say that this thing was designed for coastal patrol. So you might be thinking, why is there a solid armor-piercing rocket? Well, the idea was, was because this plane was obviously hunting U-boats, the idea was you'd launch this and it would penetrate the sea without exploding because it had no explosive charge, and it would simply just penetrate inside the hull and just do shrapnel damage, a bit like an AP round if you think about it. 
but obviously in rocket form because an initial bullet won't have the strength to go through water and then obviously through the hull of a ship or in this case a submarine so that's the intention of these rockets they do nothing against aircraft in my personal experience and they do nothing to bases they also require a direct hit on a tank in order to kill it in tank or in terms of any ai tank in terms of a player tank i've never hit them with one of these so i can't tell you from personal experience but still i would not advise carrying rockets i would just take the bombs if i was you so as you can tell, this thing has quite a lot of firepower going for it. It's got a decent enough bomb load to kill bases and ground targets. And like I said, it's a tanky sod, so it can definitely take a beating if it has to. But in my personal opinion, I think the Havoc can definitely do more in terms of taking damage and dishing out punishment. But the Hudson is definitely the more versatile option, because it can actually kill a base on like the Havoc. Although the Havoc can sometimes kill a base, it depends on the BR. But the Hudson can pretty much always kill a base, so it's very useful to have that. It really depends on what you're looking for for a premium. If you want something that can kill both bases and fighters, you can definitely do that. It, this thing can also kill bombers, so there is that. The Havoc can do, obviously, that in a more brutish sort of role because of its durability, but it won't be doing as much in terms of base bombing. So it's really down to what you prefer. Personally, myself, I prefer the Havoc, but if I ever need to hunt some bombers for a daily, this is definitely the thing I take out first. And trust me, this plane is fun. Without further ado, I'm going to head you over to the gameplay now. I really hope you enjoyed seeing the Hudson Mark V covered in this review, and I will see you all on the next one. Well, all I'll say to doing this is do not try what I'm doing at home. It's an old, um, it's an old method I used to use to spade early bombers on this specific map, consolidations of positions in Sicily. Yeah, don't try this at home. There's basically a huge cluster of armoured vehicles down there, and uh, we're bum rushing to them. And planes like that are exactly why it gets a bit harder to do this. There we go, bombs away. I don't know how many we'll get, it varies, but still. We'll check on the bombs in just a second. I need to turn so I don't get shot up by this guy. I don't think we're going to get that many, because obviously we did drop the bombs quite late. Yeah, we got nine. I'll take that. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Could have definitely done better if we'd aimed the 100 pounders better, but oh well. You'll notice I've not brought the rockets, as you would have seen in the hangar section. If you skipped here, then I'll briefly exaggerate, like, explain it. Um, the... To, to, to put it simply, the rockets are god-awful. Hello, Mr. 115. How are we doing today? Good try and aim for that pilot. There we go. He got both our engines. Rather interestingly. Good shot on his part, though, I must admit. Alright, let's cut the engines, because we're going to need them later. She is a bit heavy, but she's a solid aircraft, that's for sure. You do get front guns as well, but I don't think we're going to get guns on this guy. Let's try the old drive-by trick. Nice crit. I'll take it. I'll leave my teammate to deal with this. I need to turn the engines back on now. Otherwise, we ain't getting back to the base. Because we kind of need engines for propulsion. It looks to be focused on us. Nigel, teach him a lesson, would you? Yeah, I think my teammate's got that under control. Both engines have just gone black, so we need to head back. Go on, mate. Get him. Get him. Yeah, we're losing a lot of speed, so we need to head back quickly. I must admit, like, that 115 pilot was a good shot. There we go, he got him. Nice. So it's just two enemies left. I love using this thing as, like, a pseudo support plane, like, a support fighter. It's just so fun. It's tanky enough to take a beating as well, and it has EFS, if memory serves. It's very nice. That I will admit. So we've got just enough power left in the engines to get back to base. 
And then I think we'll go work on those bases if our bombers don't do it. Although we've got a Catalina, so we'll soon find out. That was an interesting shadow bug then. And there we go. Nice and easy landing. I don't think our P-36 is making it home, but that's where we come in. And same with this hawk over here. Anywho, I'll see you in a couple of minutes once we get back into the action. Well, welcome back. We've got a bit ahead of ourselves here by getting to the battle. And uh, let's just put it this way, the enemy team is kind of dead. The P-36 I mentioned earlier, he did not make it back to base, unfortunately, but that's fine. We're going to make sure we get the win. He, he definitely helped out quite a bit. And luckily, the Hudson is well equipped for the making sure we are going to win job. That's for sure. If Gaijin would actually let me bomb ground targets without friggin' bugging out or something. Alright, quickly switch to the 100 pounders, because I'm going to try and carve it, like, drop a few bombs here. So I'll drop one there, and I will drop one there. That was quite awful, I must admit. I don't feel proud of that bomb dropping. Normally I'm quite accurate with mine. Yeah, I feel, I feel quite ashamed of that one, I must admit, but oh well. It's because the Hudson doesn't allow you to drop bombs at weird angles. Like most, well, some bombers do. Right, we'll drop a 250 right there. That should get it. Oh, come on, the tank died to AI. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oh, well. We could easily go and help out the Sunderland. The Sunderland's not been able to really drop his bombs. But like I said, because this thing's so well equipped for its job, we can just farm up whatever we like. Take out bases, take out ground targets, take out tanks. Obviously not with the guns, but still. There we go. That's another one. I'll use the turrets for that one. Like I said, this thing is very, very versatile. It, that That's what really drawed me to it when I first got my hands on it. I was like, this thing is really versatile and just really effective. And it just goes to show, like, something when, like, when you put a bomber that has these abilities at the right BR, it can definitely do a lot of work. But unfortunately, Gaijin and bomber balance is something that will never happen, a bit like this sucker crap we're about to intercept. I probably won't kill it here, but that's why we have a hawk to do that. We can hunt condors, but well... Yeah. Teammate's probably going to steal it, but I'm honestly not bothered, because, well, I'm not here to clap in a Hudson all day long. I'm just here to have a bit of a laugh. Set a load of fires on a condor. Turret can't get up there, unfortunately. Looks like the Sutherland tried to come and help. And the Hawk is forming up alongside us. And that's game. Two kills, 21 grand, one assist. I'll give him a little wing waggle. Hey, he's giving me a wing waggle back. Respect. GG's. Love it when players can have even the littlest of, like, interactions like that. Even if we don't speak using the chat. Like, wing waggle just showing a sign of respect is something definite. And you will get a lot of that in the Hudson, because the Hudson is fun. You just won't get it from the enemy team, because you'll probably be clapping them quite hard. But all I'll say is, if you're looking for a cheap premium, that is a bit more, shall we say, a bit more versatile than the Havoc, because obviously the Havoc's bombs are not that great. This is definitely the more versatile option of the two, but if you want something that's just a pure brew, get yourself the, the Havoc these days. But trust me, if you get your hands on this plane, you're not going to forget it. And let's put it that way. This thing, ever since I got it, has been a barrel of laughs. And once you get your hands on one, you'll know exactly what I mean.